you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. it's okay for a Christian to eat pork it's okay for a Christian to eat anything you can eat anything um, let me read some scriptures to you that will be helpful to you I'd read um, to you from Romans chapter 14 And verse 14, he says, I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him that estimate anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So there's nothing unclean of itself. All right? 
But if you think it's unclean, this is it's up to you. It's up to you. But God lets you eat what you want to eat. I'll read um, some of those to you. I think they'll all be helpful to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8, he says, But meat, that means food, commended us not to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So whether or not we eat, he says, it doesn't make us better, it doesn't make us worse. So what then? Eat what you want. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, from verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience heard with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. In verse 4 it says, For every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. That will cover pork, wouldn't it? This opportunity to ask questions. Is it wrong for a Christian to work in a cigarette manufacturing company? Well, the Bible doesn't talk about cigarettes. There's nothing wrong in working in a cigarette manufacturing company. Because there's nothing, there's nothing in the Bible about cigarettes. Of course I know that... Um, some have said that cigarettes are, uh, are responsible for some, uh, for some form of cancer. And so they warn about it, which is good. Uh, and then in various societies, they warn about cigarettes. Why don't they just ban it? Why don't they just ban the production of cigarettes then? But they don't ban it because of some other reasons. And then, of course, uh, most Christians don't use cigarettes. Why? Because many think something's wrong with it. Not because the Bible says anything about cigarettes, but because of um, a lot of what is associated with it. So, in general, they don't use cigarettes. But that's not to say something's wrong with working in a cigarette manufacturing company. It's like working in a brewery, in a beer company. Most Christians don't drink beer. But what the Bible says about it is not to take too much wine. That's about all it really says about drinking. And um, there's nothing wrong with working there. So, if the, the, the state, actually, the state that makes these laws, if the state thinks that they don't want to have cigarettes at all, then ban the company altogether. Well, there are many economic reasons why they wouldn't ban them. Um, not because there's something morally wrong with cigarettes. See, there isn't anything morally wrong with cigarettes. See, there's, no, there's no place in the Bible where it shows you there's something morally wrong with cigarettes. But for health reasons, they warn about the implications of smoking. And that's very important. from Cyprus and that is asking is it compulsory for all Christians to win souls one-on-one -on -one? what if I partner with the work of the ministry only and don't win souls personally 
would that be fine with God? <laughs> um, firstly, the Bible didn't particularly say anything about one on one. But you will win souls if you live for Christ. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father that's in heaven. If you live your life before men at work, um, at home, in your neighborhood, everywhere you go, your light will shine. You will speak as a Christian. Your language will be from the kingdom. So there's no way that you will not communicate the light of God except you're ashamed of Christ. If you're not ashamed of him, they will ask you sooner or later why you act the way you do, why you believe the things you believe, and why you talk the way you do. And that will be an opportunity to explain the gospel to them. So the Lord will definitely create for you opportunities to minister to individuals the gospel of Christ. It will surely happen. So um, you, can, you can expect that. So when you say, is it compulsory for a Christian to win souls? Yes, you must win souls. Your life will win souls if you live according to the gospel. And what the word tells us is that we should be ready to give anyone the reason for our believing, for our faith. So he will definitely create for you such opportunities. Dearly, I love you too. My question is, can the grace of God depart from a Christian? If yes, what could lead to such? The grace of God cannot depart from a Christian. It should never depart from a Christian. It was never intended to depart from a Christian. But anybody could walk out of the grace of God or frustrate the grace of God. So that's a possibility. But God withdrawing his grace from you never happens. He doesn't do it. Not to a Christian. And um, so nothing can lead to a Christian uh, losing the grace of God from God's judgmental action. But anybody could walk away from the grace of God or frustrate it. I would like to know the difference between faith and God's time. How can we reconcile the two with respect to receiving answers to our prayers? Is there anything like God's time to one who has faith? Yes, it depends on what the subject is. Most of the time, there are two classes of things that we, um, we want to relate with God for as far as our expectations and prayers are. You classify these as indefinite subjects and definite subjects, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Indefinite subjects here would refer to those things that the Word of God hadn't specifically said something about. For example, your job. He spoke generally about your job but not specifically about your job as to what company you're going to work in, uh, what type of business you're going to do. Um, he didn't say something specifically about the school you go to and then uh, your relationships, you know, as to who do you keep friends with, um, who do you relate with today or tomorrow, and so on and so forth. So there are indefinite things that we might want to pray about. Maybe you want to embark on a journey and you're praying. Do I go to that city or not? These things are not definitely spoken of in the word, but he's given us general guidance. So God's timing becomes relevant in these issues because um, he, he leads you by his spirit. And you can know of God's timing through your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So if you know the Holy Spirit in your life, and you understand the guidance of God's word because we're guided by the word because the word of God is light and we're guided by the Holy Spirit who lives within us. So if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he can guide you about the timings of God. 
And that's important. So learn to walk by the Spirit. Learn to work in step with God through the Holy Spirit. And that means that your fellowship with the Holy Spirit has to be better. And then he will guide you in the affairs of life. Now the second category are those things that are definitely spoken of in the Word. Now, because these things are so definite in the Word of God, there's no such thing as timing, but the time is now. For example, when he talks about your salvation, it's very definite. When God talks about your righteousness, it's very definite. You don't have to pray, oh God, am I, do I have to be, am I, when am I going to be righteous? It's now. It's in Christ now. Your justification is now. You know, who are you in Christ? All of these things. Are you a victor in any situation? Yes, your victory is now. All of these things. So, there are those things that God's Word has spoken definitely about, and you don't have to pray about them as to when is this going to happen. Usually all of those things come into now because they are fulfilled in Christ Jesus. But as to working out the indefinite things of life, you would need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to know the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to learn to walk with Him. Christianity is a supernatural walk with God. Even in rituals, dead people and traditional doctors. <clears throat> is it okay for a believer to still believe in rituals? What kind of rituals? and then believe in dead people. Oh, what do you mean dead people? I'm not clear what your question is, but I, I, I can have a little assumption here, but it's just an assumption if that's what you mean. Um, rituals in terms of maybe some kind of sacrifices and, and some rituals that are uh, done uh, with respect to certain, to certain um, gods or um, uh, deities of some kind. Uh, and then calling on dead people, uh, thinking that um, maybe they've got some power or something of that nature. And then you say traditional doctors. It's also important to, to be sure what you mean by traditional doctors. Do you mean juju priests? If, if you're talking about juju priests that use these um, uh, some uh, spiritual power, mm, coming from some, some uh, spirit, spiritual forces and so on. If that's what you mean, a Christian shouldn't have anything to do with all of that. That's of the world. You see, that's of the world and that's, uh, that's demonic. A Christian shouldn't believe in all of those things. You already have the greater one living in you. And um, That's, that's it. A Christian shouldn't follow this. As a child of God, you've come out, out of all of these things. You have Jesus Christ, and Jesus is not dead. He's alive. And the Bible says he's alive. God raised him from the dead. He's alive. Okay, so we're following the living Christ and not living, um, living idols, which are actually non-living things like wood and stone and so on. Or even if they were gods supposedly in human beings or in animals, we don't, we don't follow that because the Bible says there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It says God has given to Jesus a name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. There's only one name under heaven by which men can be saved, and that name is Jesus Christ. And so you follow Jesus Christ. And once you follow Jesus Christ, all others um, are not to be recognized. Does God judge or punish unbelievers now by bringing painful experiences in life, poverty, sickness, and so on? 
What if these painful situations lead them to salvation? Is it from God? No, these experiences, these painful, hurtful experiences are never from God according to the scriptures. God always seeks to save anybody. So no matter what they go through, if they're going through these difficulties, the difficulties are arranged by Satan. But the angels of God always look out for the opportunity to lead someone to Christ. So they will take advantage of any situation to guide you into the knowledge of the truth. They guide you into a situation where you can receive the word, receive the gospel. But those hurtful, uh, painful experiences were not organized by God. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts 13 verse 38, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing. See, he anointed Jesus to go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Jesus never went to heal those who were uh, made sick by God. Nobody was made sick by God. See, it was Satan who always took advantage of life situations to make people sick. Now you say, you know, like some people ask, do you mean that the devil is responsible for all sicknesses? Not necessarily, but he's the remote cause. See, he's a remote cause. If you, if you study uh, the history of these things, you understand Satan is a remote cause. For example, um, what about uh, uh, germs, bacteria, um, uh, viruses, and so on and so forth, attack human beings and make them sick, were never made to make people sick. And these things have been infused by satanic power that now caused them to be negative through the curse that they brought into this world. Well, that's another day's subject, but at least you get the idea. I'll be greatly excited to have my question answered backsliding. Well, um, the term backsliding you don't really find in the New Testament, you only find it in the Old Testament. It actually means a withdrawal from the faith, um, turning away from God to some other gods. In the Old Testament, that's what it means. But on a lighter note, it is often used in expressing the uh, situation where someone begins to uh, let up on his faith, um, he, who's no longer as committed as he used to be. And like the Bible says, becoming lukewarm, like that you have in the New Testament book of Revelation, becoming lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. So that's what it describes in essence. But the real term itself is apostatizing, when you turn away from God in, in turn to other gods in the Old Testament. But if today in a church someone is said to be backsliding, it's used in a generic form to mean that that person is no longer as spiritually minded as he used to be, um, is no longer committed to the Lord as he used to be. So that's the general expression. The second part of your question says, I've been hoping that one day God will talk to me as you said he will like to. Irrespective of the fact that I, I began to have quiet times, I still haven't heard him talk to me through my years. What do I do? Well, probably God's been talking to you and you didn't recognize that he was talking to you. Now, maybe you were expecting a certain kind of voice, but God talks to us. Remember, he's a master communicator and he can talk to us in any way he chooses best. And the question is, are we listening? For example, if you study in 1 Samuel from the third chapter, you'll find a young man named Samuel, how that God talked to him when he was a little boy. And he thought it was the priest, Eli, who was talking to him. And God actually spoke to him in the nighttime while he was sleeping. And then he, he got up and went to Eli. And, and, uh, and the priest said, I, I didn't call you. And did it again several times until Eli taught him how to respond to the Spirit of God. What you need more is to learn how to respond. Because 
God can talk to you through his word when you study the Bible. God can talk to you when you're listening to the word of God being preached or taught in the church. And God can talk to you when you're listening to a brother or sister sharing the word of God with you. And these are all several ways that God has shown us in his word that he can talk to us. The question is whether or not we're taking this thing seriously. For example, when you use your Rhapsody of Realities, that's God's voice talking to you. On a daily basis, there's something for you that's specific to you. So the question is not whether God is speaking to you specifically. The question is whether you are appropriating specifically to yourself what God is saying to you. Do you think he's talking to you or do you think he's talking to us? You see, what you think will determine what your response is. So God's been talking to you in reality. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. 
Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.